and we run. Good evening and welcome everybody. We have just passed Yom Tov and we are heading headlong into the year then. Uh, so we, today we're learning Sipur and Maisi. So as I share the screen, start getting away basically down to the home stretch. And uh, you know, it's on the track of the Shbarah Hall. But give me, was that the shame, the Burim? Because these things are obviously way beyond my pay grade. And that you should have the Burim Aleva Elyon. And whatever schusim we have and the mitzvahs we have will be only just to hold down the the inherent wickedness that is within us. And should give us the burden that should be able to to learn and understand from what we're seeing here uh, a little bit. Of, of what is the final phase of this particular mason. So before I get into this, let's just sort of do a little recap to what we have learned so far. Bezat Hashem is Baruch, Besus Abena Kodesh, we have we have explained the 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 let me just put my so do not disturb so we've learned what this particular story teaches each and every one of us how to to attain our own personal malchus, which is our own destiny, how to manifest our destiny, our malchus. And it starts with the, the basic paradigm with which every person starts his journey in this world in something which Rabbeinu calls the chambers of exchange in which the good seems bad and the bad is considered virtuous and laudatory. And the kings are considered slaves and the slaves are considered king and they're sitting on the throne. And this is the starting point. Every single person starts his journey in life with a twist. It's like those, those sculpture puzzles that look like, like multi-dimensional star and you'll be able to pull them apart. It takes a heck of a long time for you to try to figure out how the heck you put them together again. It begins with you not even knowing that you are friends. You come out of life, you come out of a stage of, 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 of being a child and then teenager. The formative years, as it were, in which you are being, conv you are, you're being convinced 
that you are something. And regularly, people just spend their lives proving that what people said about them is true. If somebody as a child is feels unwanted or feels stupid or feels a failure or ugly or any one of those things, he lives the rest of his life manifesting that inner conviction again and again and again. That's the exchange. So the first impulse, because of the pain involved, the first, the first impulse is to resist. And uh, the feeling that I'm getting by dealing with things, like dealing with life, dealing with reality. And the, the, the tendency is to, to, to dull the pain, to analogize oneself in the work. So we take painkillers of various kinds from Tylenol to heroin and anything in between, or food, or immorality, or anything else, or movies, or whatever it is. The thing is that we are basically busy escaping, escaping of the pain that living a life which isn't our own leads us. At a certain point in time, relieving the pain becomes more painful than the pain itself. This is a, this is a point where you realize that, you know, this ain't working. This is just not working. This is the point where the Ben Melech, he has, he has his entire, his whole theory of if I'm the real prince, is it not enough that I lost my kingdom? Most of the rest have to be chased away. And if I'm actually the son of a slave, why? Why was why was I driven away? This world is unfair. This is just wrong. I'm sorry. And he took himself, you know, to, to living, you know, with immorality in order to dull the pain that, you know, getting drunk and doing whatever he was doing, basically escaping. At a certain point in time, he says, Mazus Asali Loki, what do you do to me? He says, he says, if I'm this and this, and if I'm not this, then and then he says, okay, but let, just just let's say that Hashem can do this. Okay. That I'm a real prince who was exchanged. How am I helping things along? I, I heard this this line from Rabbi Nassim uh, Maimon. He said, how am I helping things? How am I solving the problem by living lawlessly? How am I helping the situation? And with this, we get the first inkling First of all, HaKadosh Baruch comes into our lives. And secondly, we get to understand, we learn the first thing, so go ahead and take yourself the first job that you will find. And that's the first lesson, or the second lesson, whichever you want to call it. In a person's achieving his own 
loyalty, his own dominion, to manifest his own uh, inherent stature. If you want to be a king, you have to get down to business, get down and dirty, and start working. You can find people, good people, caution the people, who go around and they collect money. They can stand outside a supermarket and they're collecting money. And you can ask them, you know, so why don't you just get yourself a job? He says, well, I heard an answer. He says, well, what are they paying already? What do you mean, what happened? Oh, five, six thousand shekels, well, that's not money. Or the standing and collecting money, it is money. Why, and many, many people are, are, are getting, get embroiled with running away from getting down and digging the earth with their hands. Even if it's not a fiqh of even if even if it's humiliating to do this, the only way that you can start becoming a melech is if you're willing to do the work of a slave. It's not a career. There's no glory in it. People scream at you. People put you down. But the thing is, not just you want a job. You don't just want to make a living. That's taken. You want to work. That was the next lesson. After we learned that the person needs to let go of his ego, let go of his gaiva, let go of, of, of this this. Uh, false self-image that he has, which is all Gaiman. And just get down to work. Two of the behemoths are lost. They go into the forest and he's going after them. He goes after them and then at a certain point he sees that he cannot, if he goes any deeper, the animals of the forest will devour him. And if he goes back, The merchant, the owners of the owner of the behemoths will kill him. So it's a 50-50 proposition for him. At that point in time, he learns the next lesson. Instead of going back and telling, listen, they ran into the forest. What do you want? I'm not going to go into the forest. He chooses to go ahead and he doesn't run away. He keeps on chasing the animals. The next lesson towards in the steps going up to your own kingdom is responsibility. The easy way out, the slave's way out is to go back and say like, what, what do you what 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 was what, what was I supposed to do? What do you mean? What you, were you supposed to do? You're supposed to go after the behaviors? That's what you call. But going after the behaviors in such an impossible situation means that I can fail. If I meet a situation in which I'm honest, of course, what do you want? What can I do? I mean, there's a forest, there are animals. Well, what can they do? And I go back and I can tell a terrorist, I'm not a failure. I'm a victim of circumstance. But to go on means that you are facing, distinctly facing the possibility of being a failure. I remember a friend of mine was working to was working for 
a Russian oligarch where he was still, the oligarch was still oligarchic, little, you know, but he was on his way to, to making it big. In the 90s, you know, the 1990s. And the guy told him, listen, I want you to go ahead and buy me a Lincoln town car and send it to Russia because there was, there was a certain deadline you have to buy it. So this guy, this guy went and he to, to the place where they sold it and it was more expensive than the guy, than the money that the guy told them they should, should pay. But the thing is that the guy wanted the car. He was taking the car to Russia. You know, so the guy decided not to buy it because it was more money that the guy actually said the car was worth. This oligarch got so upset with him, he fired him. Why didn't he buy the car? Because buying the car and being proven wrong would show to this guy, smack to his face, your failure. Not buying the car was playing it safe. Hey, you told me a certain amount of money. It was more than that. This oligarch did not understand what the guy was talking about. The day later, you could not take those cars out of America anymore. Yeah, but you're risking failure. When you're taking responsibility, you are risking failure. This is what, this is the, the, the second or third or fourth, whatever you want to call it, lesson on the ladder, the stair, staircase to heaven, stairway to heaven, whatever you want to call it, to manifesting your own destiny. Willing to take responsibility means willing to experience failure. Stick with your responsibility. And if you fail, you fail. I'll make me feel horrible. So I feel horrible, I'll deal with it then. If you're not willing to go through this, you won't manifest your greatness. Then of course he meets the, the, the real slave. And he said, it's, there's clarity that comes to him in his life where he learns that um, me and my circumstances are two separate things. I am me and I have absolutely no idea who I am, but my body, my feelings, my convictions, my situation, my complexes, my drawbacks, my path and defects, my wife, my children, where I live, are all tools that were given to me in order to achieve to manifest my destiny. That's what that for. So if I'm stupid, okay. So that's what I need to, this is what I need to be in this life. If I'm super smart, so that's what I need to be in, in this life. Because Jehovah, they're both the same. I'm not making an impression that I'm able to attain. And I'm not, you know, that, that I'm talented and I'm able to do this or able to do that, or I'm unable to do this or to do that. It doesn't make a difference. These are all tools that were given in my head. And to give them highest, to give my body, to give my, my psyche, to give to, 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 to entertain it, to help it along, 
to give it to, to, to feed it is worth it only when I finally realize that this is my slave. My reality comes to serve my ultimate destiny, which is to serve a Kodesh Baruch. I was not, I did not come into this world in order to make sous vide steaks or to fly in a private jet. If that happens to be in my situation, no problem. But that's not the reason why I'm there. If it serves me, if it serves my destiny, if it serves my, 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 my primary mission, the Star Trek, they call it a prime directive, then fine. Go ahead, take care of yourself, take care of your nefesh, take care of your life, take care of your wife, take care of your children, take care of your body, take care of all these things, knowing that you have to take care of it because you're responsible, because you're the master. But they are there in order to bring you to where you need to be. You are their leader. And here is when he learns the next lesson, which is when the slave, Ben Ashifra, tells him, who he is, the Benach doesn't say anything. There's a certain stage in your growth of you becoming a Melech when you are able to keep things in the stomach. You're not a man until you are able to keep things in your stomach. If your wife digs at you, and being a woman and a Jewish one at that, she will. But you're not, you're not somebody who decided that you want to be with her. It's not an it's it's not a situation that you know something that good reasons for me to stay with him. You are committed. So you you take it. So she digs in and you just sit there. And it turns things inside you and it shows you all those things that you're a failure, you're this, you're that. Because she tells you things that there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, she's right, supposedly, or whatever it is. You have, you have no answers to them. And all you want to do is just like, shut up already. You know, just put a, put a masking tape on her mouth or something. Just, just enough. But you don't. You just listen, and you take it. The same, same thing goes to everything in your life. If you want to scream, if you want to stamp your feet, you want to say exactly what you think. The stage in your growth is you meet adversity, and you keep quiet. You keep your concept, I would say. You can't really make it. You can't manifest your own destiny, your own particular greatness, unless after you learn that you need to work, after you, you, you learn responsibility, after Understand that you are, you have a slave, you have a slave, and you're committed. Now comes a stage that you need to be to begin. You have to be able to keep your mouth shut. On the face of it, this is, I mean, anybody understands this is, this 
the only people that cannot keep their mouth shut, you know, it's like a, a slave. You know, or, or a woman has to say, well, slave can be in but it's a woman, she, she, has, she has to talk, she has to say. It's inside, it has to come out. If you want to be the man, if you want to be the one who's carrying the load, who is leading the way, that urge to blurt out, to give relief to your inner tension by lashing out, by saying something really clever that you're going to regret <laughs> for years and years and years to come. Keep your own counsel. Then we learned the next step. The next step was, if you want to move ahead and change a paradigm, take upon yourself the final mission of actually rectifying your coming to the home stretch, claiming your, your greatness. You need to give up your previous self-deception. He's giving the box, the instrument, that you put on Amazon makes them sing, for the elusive skill of being able to understand one thing from another. In our way of explaining this, it's analogous to, we all feel safe in our known miseries. All these things that we cry about, that we whine about, are basically an envelope of comfort. We're comfortable there. In fact, the minute that you change the paradigm on you, people win the lottery. They lived all their lives as failures, and suddenly, boom, they become mega millionaires. Usually within a year, they are steeped in humongous debt. People that become rock stars. They run to use drugs, the great, great majority of them. Movie stars, whatever it is, is because that's too much. That's too much, that's not who I am. I don't deserve this. There was a band in Seattle called Nirvana. The guy, the head of the band killed himself, shot himself with a shotgun in the head how a guy, or the kind of thing that the guy has to get around not to shoot himself with a shotgun in the head, how you can't even hold it. They said it used to come to concerts, people used to scream. They used to say, stop screaming so loud, I'm not that wonderful. Just to run away for, the, the guy from the Rolling Stones said that he was using heroin, he was injecting heroin into his veins because just to take a little break from being a Rolling Stone. He's just a guy. Giving up the old paradigm takes guts. It takes guts. You have to go through the, to the place of, of surrender, which he does when he goes to work. You have to go through the step of taking responsibility, which is when he follows the animal. 
you have to understand that your reality is not out to get you. But rather, these are the circumstances in which you have, or these are, these are the hand that you are dealt. These are the cards that you are dealt, whether they're strong or weak, it doesn't matter. Because life is not poker. Life is like bridge. Any kind of, you can win with any hand if you understand that this is what your mission is. The next step, as we said, keep a secret. Keep your feeling inside you. Are you bursting to say it? You gotta say it, you gotta, okay. I don't have to say it. I really don't have to say it. And the next thing is, after you're going, you're, 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 you're going through an inventory of everything that you are. This is only possible with this way it is. It's only possible when you're talking, with some, talking it out with someone. And you're finding out what's really going on with my life. What's wrong with me? You know? In various 12 step programs, it's called making a, a moral inventory, taking a moral inventory of oneself. Fearless inventory of oneself. Mind your inventory is not just the bad stuff, it's also the good stuff. Put it all out on the table, put the cards on the table and see who you really are and accept it. Admit it, talk about it, talk about the Kodesh Baruch If you have somebody that you can talk to, you can trust, talk to him. Then you come, then you come to the stage where you're willing to let go. You're willing to let go. That seems like, well, you're not really doing anything, are you? Being willing to let go is not really doing, is it? But it is. But it is. Hanging on to my complexes, to my skewed ways, to my denial of seeing who I really am, the way that I live my life, is because living in the warmth and stench of my own muck, excuse the expression, like a pig in the sty. It may not be very glorified, but this is who I am. And it feels safe because I know this situation. I know it's normal that people scream at me. It's normal when people reject me. It's normal. And in fact, I, I get to keep my pride, you know, and stand me. It's a cruel world. You get to be angry. Above everything else, you get to abscond responsibility. How many feelers have to go down? A person to count as well as the national money. I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner, I can't get out of here. You know, they say you know, the German fictional uh, uh, um, quintessential Fibber, the Baron von Minch, uh, was a um, Menchhausen, whatever it is. He's, so one of the stories that he told, he said he once was, he was singing in a, in a, in a quagmire 
and he pulled himself with his own hair out of the out of the swamp from Minhagen. Ran from Minhagen. He can't do that. To be able to understand one thing from another, which is which enables him to get into the into that kingdom altogether and solve the puzzle of the garden, which is the puzzle of this world. is when he realizes that he can't do it on your own. You have to stand by the tzaddik. If you stand by the tzaddik, your entire life will make sense. Yes, you'll go through whatever you'll go through. Pain is inevitable. Suffering, I think they say it's in this Ted 12 sentence, suffering is optional. You have to go through life, whatever it is you go through, there's nothing you can do about it. But how you take it determines whether you're suffering or you're just rolling along with the punches. And you realize that each one builds you up. Each one brings you up. In a certain way, you realize now when you are being a maven dormit of dover, when you understand one thing from the next, that you can't do it alone. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with you. The Tzaddik is with you. And you don't have to worry. That is the last step, as it were, before you're actually stepping onto the throne. which is let go, let the shame in. Let him in. Put your trust onto Hashem and he will sustain you, says the other man. There's so many things that make us freak out yeah, but what if he won't step up to the plate? What if Chazam Khalil Hashem will, will abandon me the way that my father abandoned me? I mean, yeah, I get all these promises. Hashem is going to be with me. He's going to sustain me. He's going to, whatever it is, but what, 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 what if it's not going to happen? What if it's going to be just the way that my father told me he's going to get me this, he's going to get me that, he's going to take me somewhere, whatever it is, and he doesn't even show up. That he leaves me in the lurch. That in essentially it disowns me. And you take this relationship that you had with your own father and you do a copy-paste of the Kodesh Baruch The only way that you can do this is you can, when you get closer to the tzaddik, the tzaddik is the one that understood things the way they really are from the get-go and worked on himself every single step of the way. The Kodesh Baruch Hu is with you. You have fears. You have, you have this, this, this sweating nightmares that when push comes to shove, 
your father won't look at you? That you'll have to fend for yourself? You bring it to the Mishmah. And you tell it to him, just the way it is. Ultimately, getting him to the Medina to, to change, to reverse the name, depends on being maybe in Dover, Dover, understanding one thing from another. Even though you don't know who and what and how. Leaning on the schutz of the koyach of the tzaddik is like that. Hashem will take care of you. He will not abandon you. Hashem is not, he's your father, but he's not your physical father with all his drawbacks. He's not that father that whatever it is that your own particular father did or didn't do to you. Go for it. Go for it. You have the tzaddik right there. All you need to do is just stand next to the tzaddik and you don't need to run anymore. There's so many excuses that we give to why you, you run. I'm up to my responsibility, I'm doing this, and I have to, and this, and that, whatever it is. No, the truth is that I'm running. I'm running away. Because I, I, you know, standing there, looking at it, just, it's just, I'm just looking at my inadequacies to no end. That's what I'm running away from. Don't worry. You talk to Hashem, you cry to Hashem, you beg Him, and ultimately you wait. The biggest secret, the biggest, biggest secret of Avedis Hashem is waiting. The biggest secret of Bitochen is waiting. You do whatever you need you to do, do it, you understand it, and wait. But, uh, wait. We want to take control. We want to wrestle control. We want to hold it. You can't. You can't control. Just all you can do is just do your share. That's it. I was gonna be, but you don't know what's going on. You know, you know, she's there, she's telling me this, and he's doing that, and then, then what are you talking about? The whole thing. Yeah, yeah. The only thing you can do is do your share and wait. Don't worry about it. It has to come after when you're doing what you're talking, it has to go through waiting. Rabbeinu says in Torah Vav, Abalitar, anybody who comes to earn his bread with purity, Omrim Lohamten. Pavolia, Pavolia. Slow is real. Wait. Hashem will come through with your Parnosim. Hashem will come through with your Shlom Bais. Hashem will come through with your health, Hashem. Hashem will come through with everything that you are with 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 of the children. Hashem will come through with everything. Don't push. We learn in Teirachap. We were learning now. Don't push, because if you hit the rock, guess who gets hit? You. Anybody who pushes the hour is being pushed by the hour. Everybody who insists on things being my way, and Rebbeinu says, 
people don't want to suffer a little, so they end up suffering a lot. And this brings us basically to the home stretch of the of this particular mason. Whereas he finishes with the garden, and you realize that everything has to do with the man that's standing, the king that stands by the garden. That is Melech Shalom Shalom. This is that this is the tzaddik. Abrula Asara said the ministers told him, Afal Pichen, even though we saw from you such a thing. Afal Pichen, Mishin Dover Echad and Royal Tedlachan Malucha. For one thing that you accomplished, it's not enough to give you your melucha, your kingdom. And the Talmud follows. Obviously, we're going to finish this. Hopefully, we'll talk about it next week. There's a throne here. There's a chair from the king that was here. And the throne is extremely high. And by the chair are standing all kinds of animals or sculptures of animals made of wood. When it says, it's carved from wood. It says as follows. And before the throne stands a bed. Vetzela Mito, by the bed, stands a table. Vala Shulchan, and on the table, Oime Benoyim, stands a lamp, a candelabra. Now it is time for you when it comes to changing the name of the Medina from the, 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 the wise Medina in the silly Malchus to the way it used to be before. You have to go in. You have to go inside yourself. This has to do with the Sikha that we learn on Motsu Shabbos. The Rabbeinu said there's going to come a time when a, a posh to ish kosher, a simple ish kosher, will be a chiddush like the Baal Shem Tov during his lifetime. And we explained with the great uh, benefit of Rav Shimon Teichner, which, by the way, this year is dedicated to his health. He has been diagnosed with corona. Zat Hashem, he should be healthy and it should be okay with him. Uh, there were many tzaddikim. We said there were many tzaddikim during that time. But somebody who was totally connected to Kodesh Baruch with every single breath, with every single uh, uh, movement, with every single, uh, with iota of his being, the way B'Hashem Tov was, it was a Geval de Gefidish. There was nobody like that, not even close. It was a new paradigm. The same thing, Abeno says that in this, in our generation, where even the people that are from, even the people that are from mo mostly are going through the steps, they're going through the motions. So Poshat El Chid means, means somebody whose life is connected to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Every single thing in your life is connected to Kodesh Baruch Hu. Every thought, every word, every deed, every reaction, whatever you're going through is connected to Kodesh Baruch Hu. So first of all, the first thing that you notice 
is there's a chair from the king. Is your ego. There's your pride. All kind of animals, all kind of birds, which are basically bas reliefs. They're carved, they're made out of wood. All your thoughts, I mean, they call the thoughts in the, in the mind of a person, he calls them animals. The bad thoughts come into your head and you battle them with good thoughts. The Shabbat who does it, he says, it's like, it's like, it's like the, 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 the World Series where you have the, the bad guys and the good guys. The bad machshavas are bad guys and the good machshavas are the, the good, are the good guys. And there's a battle going on. Everything is com coming inside your head. There's a battle that's going on inside your head. Ultimately, the idea of turning, reversing the, the, the name of the machos to the way it used to be before, it's about giving to a Kodesh Baruch. What does it mean, giving to a Kodesh Baruch? The uh, Baal Sulam explains. He asks, why were, why was the person got to Yetzirah first? And well, this will finish for, for, for tonight. Why the, the, the man got, gets Yetzirah when he's born and the Yetzirah comes in only at age 13. I mean, Yetzirah seems to have a lot going for it a lot of unfair advantages, including hormones and growing years and whatever it is, he needs also to have to have a, a, a handicap of 13 years starting the race before anything else. This is why does why a person has to go through life and then die and then come to life again. And 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 Chazal said that all those who passed away, they're standing up with their, with all their defects. And they're being perfected. What's the point in that? And he says, ultimately, Kodesh Baruch Hu has created one thing, something from nothing. We spoke about it before at least once. Everything else was created something from something. There's only one thing that was created something from nothing. And that's the will to receive. Kaddish Baruch Hu contains everything. The one thing that Kaddish Baruch Hu does not have, as it were, is the will to receive. This had to be created. And he takes this idea one step further. That is, a person or anything, anyone, can only receive as much as they want to receive. It, it is easier to, keep, to pick up 200 pounds with your bare hands than to pick up a feather if you don't want to pick it up. The will, the rotson, is the thing that makes anything, any receiving, possible. If you don't want it, you cannot receive. It's not a Kabbalah. So he says that that's why a child is born with Yetzirah. Because Yetzirah is all about me, 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 me. With this, the child is building himself vessels and Kalim with which to receive. He is enlarging the capacity to get, which means his will to get. So when a child is small, 
it's about candies and chocolate and, and Looney Tunes. And then when the child becomes a mitzvah and if Bezrat Hashem, the child is educated right, the Seata Deshmaya, you now the child wants to learn Torah. It's still he wants to take, he still he wants to receive, but he wants to receive good stuff because he wants to excel. He wants to be good. We all want to be good. It's our pain that makes us behave in a bad way. But we all want to be good. Ultimately, and with this we will finish, when a Kaddish Baruch Hu is the ultimate giver and you are the ultimate receiver, when it comes as a paradigm, you are completely the opposite of Kaddish Baruch Hu. And spiritually, the, the difference in paradigm is the greatest distance that there is. If you have a communist on one side of the world and a communist on the other side of the world, you can say they're very close to one another spiritually. If you have two people sitting right next to each other, one of them is a communist, one of them is a capitalist, they're very far, spiritual, they're very far from one another, even though physically they may be close. See, the Kodesh Baruch is the ultimate giver, and you are the ultimate receiver means that you are as far as possible from a Kodesh Baruch And in your mind, you come first. I want, I want, I want. The first thing is the chair, the covered, the thoughts, the wills, the craves. Ultimately, the idea is that you want to become a giver, which means you come to Kaddish Baruch Hu and you give your getting. In other words, you come to a Madrega where you are so connected to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, in all these things, in the chair, and in the bed, and in the table, and in the lamp, which is the Chochmo, where you only want to receive in order to give the Kodesh Baruch Hu to opportunity to give then you are equalizing the paradigm between you and Hashem. You're both givers. You're the closest to Hashem as you can be. Is that Hashem we will continue next week. Thank you so very much for being here. I appreciate that. And is that Hashem uh, next Thursday? I have uh, Likute Marat. Um,